the Lord when I was meditating on some of the things felt like the Holy Spirit again came and was speaking to me and drawing me in to see the real issue of your first love and leaving your first love. You find that over in the book of Revelation chapter 2. Chapter 2 of Revelation, where he's talking to the church at Ephesus, and I just, you know, and he's talking about leaving your first love, and I thought that was so significant because the epistle or the letter to the people of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, is one of the most powerful spiritual documents we have in the New Testament, and just apparently Paul could really just go. You know, he just really could share. And and yet this was written sometime later. There had been an issue with the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. Um, and this is, a, this is a theme in a couple of the other verses right here when he's dealing with this church. Your labor and your patience um, and your works. And... From that, we can assume that these guys had continued to serve the Lord for many, many years and that um, there was a quality, as it were, to the church at Ephesus, probably because there was a quality to their desire after the Lord and, could I say, even their openness to the Lord. And let's just face it, all, uh, everyone's openness to the Lord is not equal. Um, some have things that they don't want to give up. Some just have really never dug in to the, to the word to know the Lord. Others have been moved on by the Lord at certain times. And, and let's say that there was a consistency to the Lord moving on them at certain times. But it was like the Lord moves here, then there's this gap. The Lord moves here, and then there's this gap. The Lord moves here, and then there's this gap. So there is an ongoing dealing that jumps gaps. And so you could say in that sense there's an inconsistency. An inconsistency of what? Being religious or... Trying to be spiritual, no. An inconsistency of, I guess the scripture here says it best, an inconsistency of your first love. Um, Verse 3, and hast borne and hast patience, there it is again, and for my name's sake have labored and has not fainted. So, we don't know if the church at Colossal is still going or some of the other churches that the epistles were written too, but we know that the church of Ephesus is going long after this. And apparently some of it, a lot of it maybe has to do with the fact that they just have kept going. They've just continued to serve the Lord and they've not fainted and they've had patience. And um, I always think of Jesus' words, you know, we, we sort of see it down at the end and he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that has always affected me because I thought... He could have said, well done, thou really spiritual person. But that Jesus, can I say it like this? Jesus admired faithfulness. Faithfulness. Because faithfulness breeds longevity and a lot of other things. But then, verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And that, to me, is what sort of broke my heart. Inside, I've been tender now for a while, for several months, very tender. And I I don't know that it's shown so much, but uh, my tenderness 
is um, that I love Jesus and I really can't get him off of my mind. And I really don't want to get him off my mind. And I have been praying for a good long while to be able to get back to the fullness of that first love because it is Jesus that was my first love. And when I read this, it really got me the wording of it. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. In other words, he almost sounds hurt. He sounds like a hurt lover, you know. I, I have, you know, it's not like, well, you've broken commandments or you've done this wrong or you've done that or all of the religious things that we think are so important. You know, you, you haven't been tithing or, you know, what? You know, all the ridiculous, really in light of the beauty and, and our hearts after Jesus, they're all, in my opinion, just foolish in comparison, in comparison. And he brings that out in such a way that um, has been drawing my heartstrings. And he, did, he said, you've left your first love. He, he didn't say, you've left the things that you loved first about Christianity or about serve. You know what I mean? I realized early how precious his love for me was, and, and that, I, there's no way I could ever put that in words. I can tell you about events. I can never tell you how precious to this day that Jesus would love someone like me, and that's the truth. Still, to this day, without any change in my whole being, that somehow he would reach down, but that he would reach down and take to himself someone like me. That's, that's not even what he did that I'm talking about. It's even that song, what kind of man is this that he would, you know, how do you describe Jesus, just Jesus, that you, they, that you love Jesus? But for me, for me, uh, a couple of people got up and shared this morning, and they said, well, I don't really remember everything, and I have a bad memory. I have a, I have a terrible memory, you know. But I remember Jesus, and I remember the altars. You know, remember Abraham? His life was marked by altars. You want to know the life of Abraham? You want to understand his life? It's marked by altars. And that's one of the things I really appreciated that Shay shared is this thing of remembrance and memorials because every memorial in the scriptures was marked by an altar, including that woman who is at Jesus' feet. And Jesus says to the Pharisee, from the minute I got in here, you never washed my feet. You never, in other words, you never showed anything toward me. You know, but he's invited him to his house, so he wants, if there's anything prestigious about Jesus, let that be attributed to me. I let him in. You know what I'm saying? Other, other uses for Jesus, not for this woman. Did, did it mean something to Jesus? Oh my God. He said, wherever this gospel is preached, this is going to be a memorial to her. All right. So, so he says, nevertheless, I have something against you. So he says, he says, what I have a hard time with is that you've left this first love. What he says over here in that story about that woman is, this shall be a more memorial forever. I, I will never forget this. What is it that touches Jesus' heart, you know? What is it that really touches his heart? Well, is it that we're 
patient and that we labor. And, well, yeah, he's, he, he marks that, but he doesn't uh, memorialize it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's good. You can't say it's not good. It is good. Thank God. And I thank God for all of your faithfulness. And, you, you know, you've suffered and you've gone through stuff and you've been patient. And, you've, um, and may the Lord reward you in incredible ways for that. But, uh, and, and it doesn't sound like, you know, it doesn't sound like, well, you know, you're not going to make it to heaven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it seems like all is good. You're going to make it even without this first love thing. Do you, do you get it? You're going to make it. Well, that's all I want to do is make it to heaven or make it to whatever. And that, that right there, that's that's missing the mark. Settling for something that's good or even of God, really of God, could really be of God. But those memorials throughout the Old, Old and New Testament, they were things that God said, mark this with a memorial. Gather stones out of the Jordan where you crossed and come on into the promised land and put, put a memorial up right there. It's a, and it's an altar, but it's a memorial because there is no true memorial in the mind of the Lord that doesn't come through an altar, you know. And, and it's just a wonderful exchange there because he says, you know, take... Take stones that were outside of the promised land, 12 stones, and set them in the middle of the Jordan because this thing's about to close back up. And what you were outside of the land, these 12 stones representing the 12 tribes, is going to be covered over by the Jordan, by the cross. Now take stones that have been in the Jordan, abiding in the Jordan, and bring them into the promised land and set up 12 stones representing 12 tribes and come here and remember what the exchange was. You went down into death. My son came up out of it. Remember this. And the Lord would say, if he could, if he, could he won't declare himself, so he doesn't say this stuff. This is important to me. We have to find we have to find his heart and what's important to him. We can have people tell us that, but, you know, that's, it never works, does it? When someone else tells us, you know, well, this is important to someone, it never really has the impact of, I have discovered what's important. But I fear that we don't always know from our heart what it is that really pleases the Lord. And, and maybe we know somewhat, but is that enough? You know, I mean, couldn't we all just say, hey, you know, tonight, I would like to have a new sensitivity to the Holy Spirit who knows the heart of Jesus best and will keep me sensitive. Father, we just come to you in humbled hearts to want to receive your spirit and your heart in this. And I believe you are touching us. I believe that this is from you and we, we receive it as such. We're never going to give up here uh, in seeking our first love.
Jesus. 